Hello! In this tutorial, we are going to be describing advanced code editing features, including tasks, linting, multi-cursor selection, and other helpful tools. VS Code comes with built-in JavaScript and TypeScript support, which is why in the tutorial today, we'll be using JavaScript and other web languages. For additional languages, you can install an extension. Let's start with index.html. Now we're going to type exclamation point tab. Voila! We had a snippet created using Emmet syntax. VS Code comes with Emmet syntax, which is shorthand syntax for web languages, out of the box. We want to create a small web page that shows off VS Code. We'll use Emmet syntax to type h1 space Visual Studio Code and add an image of the product. We've already brought in an Im image Visual Studio Code. And we'll add two classes here, main and hero. Now we'll want to add a link to our main.css file and navigate to main.css. Now here we'll do hero main and set the width and the height. Notice the rich IntelliSense I'm getting here. You can even look at the description if I'm unsure exactly what that attribute does. 500 pixels. Now this is really neat. If we hover over the CSS selectors, you can see this is how the rules will be applied. Image, nested in that, an element, and then another element. Well this isn't what I wanted. I wanted them to all be on the same level. If I remove the space here, that's closer to what I want, and this space. Yes, that's exactly what I want. VS Code makes it easy to apply your CSS rules accurately. Now let's run our web page. We won't go into the details in this tutorial, but I have a task created to run the web page using npm and HTTP server. That task was created here in tasks.json. If I open the command palette, type run task, press enter, choose the start task, press enter. The task is started below. You can command click to follow that link which will then open my running server here in the browser. You can see our h1 tag and then our image. I recommend reading more about tasks in the documentation. Let's look at some other editing features available to us. We can do a global find and replace. We type express and enter and see all the different places where express is. If we want to replace that with one less s, you can see we can preview that here what's deleted and what's added. Something useful is you can use regex. If we want to look at require or import, we click right here. You can now see every require or import statement. Next, let's talk about linting. Linters provide warnings and errors about the syntax of your code. That's what this red squiggly means here. I have a linter installed as an extension here called eslint. This linter provides me with JavaScript linting and marks warnings and errors in my code. Here are a couple of very useful things. I can look at all my errors and warnings down here by clicking this button in the bottom left. This opens the errors and warnings output window. You can see I have three errors here in server.js. Clicking on each of these brings me to the correct location. If I don't like an error warning, say these indent rules, I can click on it, see that it's called indent, then I can open up my configuration file and add it to my rules. Let's see, indent, notice the IntelliSense, and turn it off with zero. Notice that it was removed from my error list. If I go back here, it's no longer highlighted. To wrap up, let's show you some final tips and tricks. To use multiple cursors, click on a location and press Option. Press and hold Option for the next locations of your cursor. Here I forgot to prepend the word access. Notice how the words are typed in each location where the cursor is. I can select an entire line with Command or Control I, then I can move that line with option up or option down. This is especially useful as I want to reorder my code for readability.
I can fold my code with a keyboard shortcut or by clicking the minus box next to the line number. Opening the command palette, typing fold, I can fold all or fold by different levels. Notice the key binding on the right, command K and command zero. I can see the matching brackets by selecting the bracket or parenthesis. Notice the other highlight shows me which parenthesis that one is paired to. And finally, if my spacing is off, I can right click, click Format Code to bring my spacing more in line. Note that code formatting details are in the user's preferences. This wraps up code editing features. There are many more that we didn't cover today. Read about them in the documentation links below. Thank you.